guys, you know, I like to start the show off with all those companies who help make this podcast possible. Guys, I'm starting the show off my friends over at Yellow Jacket. Guys, Yellow Jacket has been with me since day one making quality products. And when I think of the industry and I think of just the standards been set, it's always been Yellow Jacket. And I always say this to truth. Yes, they're a sponsor. Do they make what we would say are the, the flashiest tools? No, they're not the flashiest. But you know what? They get the goddamn job done. Every time I take a Yellow Jacket tool out to do a specific job, it does exactly what I needed to do when I needed to do it. So I get it when we're looking for tools. We want the fancy stuff, the way it looks. And, you know, you can change the oil with upside down on a ladder wearing a bike helmet or whatever it is that you guys look for in your tools. I want it to do what I buy it to do. And I find that Yellow Jacket is one of the most reliable manufacturers to do that. Plus, when I think of Yellow Jacket, I think back on my dad when I first got into this industry and they're just synonymous. When you're young in the trade, they just remind me. They have that historical factor to them. And like I tell people, no matter what digital manifold you choose to get, you better have Yellow Jacket hoses hooked up to it because they are the best hands down. It's not even open for debate. Guys, remember 70 years of expertise built into every tool. Next, guys, my friends over at Company Cam, I am excited to help my friends at Company Cam promote an event they're hosting in May called Blueprint. Blueprint is a one-day event designed to help service professionals and contractors like you draft your plan for growth. This event is not exclusive to Company Cam users, so if you're a contractor or a service pro looking to network, level up your leadership, and learn more about industry trends, you won't want to miss it. It's taking place in Dallas, Denver, and Chicago. Each city will hear from keynote speakers. Sean Van Dyke will talk about how to design your customer experience to automatically create raving fans using simple technology. You also hear other industry leaders discuss three topics that may make or break any business, tech, team, and traction. Don't miss out. Register today at companycam.com slash blueprint. That's companycam.com slash blueprint. I should be at one of these events. So as soon as I figure out which one I will be at, I will let you know what city. I'm not sure if I'm going to go to Dallas, Denver, Chicago, but as soon as I do, I will let you know. You guys should go register for that. I'm pretty sure if you can't make it physically, you can watch it online. So definitely go do that. It's only going to help you. It's only going to help make you better. Also, remember, if you want to try Company Cam out, if you go to companycam.com forward slash HVAC Uncensored, you get a free 14-day trial, free, no credit card, no nothing. Try it, see if you like it. If you do, then they will give you 50% off your first two months. All right, baby, enough paying the bills. Let's get on with the pledge and rock this show out. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless the United States, and thank you to all those men and women who defend it. HVAC podcast. If you're looking to grow in the HVAC industry, then you're in the right spot. Blue collar people talking about blue collar shit. Let's get better together. So turn up the volume, buckle your seatbelt, and let's welcome your host, Gil KV Jr. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the HVAC Uncensored Podcast. I'm your host, Gil KV Jr. Another hump day, another Wednesday night, another great fucking show for everybody. Thank you guys for being here real fast before we get started. Hello to everybody in the chat. Obviously, my moderator, Mr. Rookie. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Let's see who we got in here. Mr. Everything, HVACR. What is up, my friend? HVAC Blogger. How you doing, my man? Let's see. Tom Leck, hello. That's a new one. I haven't seen you in here, so thank you for being here. I appreciate you. C. Young, HVAC, what is up, brother? 
Jared, I haven't seen you in a while, man. Thank you for being here, man. I appreciate it. So if I missed anybody, I'd apologize. But guys, I have a great show for you tonight. This is a guest who has been on the show several times, and every time he is on, it's a great discussion. Whether it's technical, whatever it is, and I love when he comes on because the chat gets involved asking questions about the topics we talk about. So I will consider this person a home performance guru. He probably won't say that about himself because he's very modest and humble, but he is a super smart guy. I love the discussions that we have. It's always fun. Known him for quite a few years now. Got to meet him in person several times. Well, he bought me and Rookie lunch in Atlanta, and it was great to be able to spend some time with him. So guys, without further ado, please help me introduce Mr. Nate Adams. What's up, Gil? By the way, What's that up? was a shitty lunch. <laughs> that was really bad. Yeah, we probably should have went in the longer line. There was a reason that line was short. But uh, hey, it's, it's okay. Well, it's it was free fun. to you, so that, that's good. At least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it worked. It, it's okay. How you doing, brother? Uh, pretty good. <laughs> Coming off of a cold, so uh, if I'm a little bit froggy, sorry about that. You know, you're living out in BFE, so I didn't think they had COVID out there. Uh, so I don't think this is COVID, but I still got a nine-year-old, <laughs> so she comes home with all kinds of crap. My wife gets it first, and then I get it, and so here we are. So yeah, I spent like Monday in bed. I felt like doing nothing. I had to put the slide deck together for the, the show Monday night. I'm just like, uh, I really don't want to do this, and just kind of had to rest up and be like, all right, I got to push through this thing for an hour, and we got her done. Just froggy, oh. that's all. Good, good, good. Yeah. Getting sick sucks, man. You know, when you have kids, you know, and I got four, they're little germ factories and they bring it home and there's always somebody with a fever, sick, something. And it's like, I think I'm going to stay at the office tonight. I'm just going to hang out here for a little while. Let me know when they go to sleep. Shit happens. I guess, you know, we got to always do this catch up. Most people in here know who you are. If God forbid they don't, let them know a little bit, you know, about your background and who you are and what you do, man. All right. So I don't come from HVAC. I ended up here totally by accident, (laughs) took a couple of wrong turns in Albuquerque. I'm known as Nate the House Whisperer, and I wrote a book called The Home Comfort Book. And my partner and I were trying to figure out, well, first he taught me how to fix really, really screwed up houses. And then we were like, all right, we, we can only do like 10 or 20 of these a year ourselves. So how can we find a way where anybody who wants one can have a healthy and comfortable home? like truly actually measurably, like no bullshit, a really comfortable, really healthy home. Like the most common feedback that I got from clients when we finished a project was, I can't believe this is the same house. So how can we do that for more people? And so I started out on the insulation side. So I'm, I'm very familiar with building shells. So insulation and air sealing, I've got a blower door, I've got two of them. So that's the stuff that I, I cut my teeth on. But then my, my partner taught me how to do some load calcs. And when you really know how to do a load calc, because manual J is usually too damned high. It's, it's oftentimes about twice as high as what reality is when you can go check to see what it is. It's like, I can't recommend enough. Put a couple of Echobee thermostats in and watch Home IQ on a really cold day or a really hot day and see how much a system runs. Yeah. You pretty much guarantee twice as large as it needs to be. I mean, if it shuts off on design day, it's oversized. Design here is 11. So we, we had a couple of days this winter that were colder than that. I mean, what was uh, Christmas Eve coldest balls for you? It sure was for me. I want to say I think Christmas Eve actually was cold because we were surprised because our winter hasn't been that bad. Oh, yeah. It was a pussycat most of the time. But yeah, we got down to in Cleveland, we were to minus five and here it was down to zero. So we were five, 10 degrees below design. And So those are the days to go look at something and see what it is. And that's one of the ways that we call doing a real world load calc. Because, I mean, that's real. That's like pink slips at the drag strip. Like, you can't lie about those. If the system shuts off, it's oversized. In learning that, we started figuring out, hey, furnaces are too damn big. Like, we're running heat loads and we're coming in at 20 and 30 and 35,000 BTUs. You can't buy a furnace that small. So we ended up in heat pump territory. And so that's part of where all the electrification came from. It wasn't necessarily like for some green thing. It was, we want to match the load. So we want something can turn down far enough to run almost all the time at a very low level. So think highway miles in a car. And when you do that, when you're putting a constant stream of heating or cooling into a house, they're just more comfortable. 
So fundamentally, that's how we got our clients to be like, I can't believe this is the same house. So if the shell's leaky, you want to deal with that if you can. The thing that we kept learning is as we went looking for, all right, who can we teach to do this stuff? We thought about energy auditors, and A, there aren't enough of them, and B, they're too poindextery. You actually need more on the sales side than you do on the technical side, is what we ended up figuring out. So people skills were more important than the technical skills. We also learned that in doing what we were doing, whenever we screwed up, we sold HVAC. (laughs) <laughs> like every, every time when the job didn't go the way that we were hoping it would go, somebody bought HVAC. I'm like, well, all right, this is kind of an HVAC focused thing that we have. So can we find ways to make this work? And we've been bumping along for like six years now. So I think the first time it was about four years ago. No, it was three. It was, it was during the lockdown because we, uh-huh. we were in Erie, Pennsylvania. My wife was like, I got to get the hell out of here. Like in the <laughs> middle of lockdown. We got a hotel room like two hours away. Just like, we just, I, I, she's like, I don't care, but not here. And then I was stuck. Like, I hope they have decent Wi Fi. And like, uh, <laughs> like, you couldn't see me. Remember, I was like sitting next to this oh, weird yeah, curtain. I do and remember the, and the guy's at the hotel desk and he's like, What the hell are you doing? It's like, I popped my mask off for it. You know, that was full on lockdown. That was some weird times. But anyway, we've been banging along trying to figure this out and we're just getting the last piece in place which is so weird to do. So really until now, 2.0 has been pretty nerdy. And you know this. We need to get it to where it'll work for maybe not most people, but basically anybody who has any real interest. And what we needed to fill in for, which is, you know, our topic for the evening is talking about free quotes. And it's like one of those things, like, can we get rid of them? Probably not. Can we make them not so shitty? Probably. So what can we do? So that that's what we've been trying to do. But the, the tough part is, if you want to look at the entire house, I mean, you can look at it as home performance, building performance, whole house, whatever you want to call it. Finally, what you're doing is zooming out. So you're a really good technician. So you're really good at looking at the equipment and figuring out what's wrong and replacing that part or, I mean, changing the equipment out and making some minor adjustments and stuff. But most techs are really good at the mechanical side. But when you zoom out and look at the whole house, everybody's head kind of spins. And then the other dangerous part is when you zoom out and look at the entire house, you now have a lot of liability, to be frank, because now you're touching everything. So, I mean, it's, I'm not a contractor anymore, but I was, you know, I was an installation contractor and like you get a call back, you know, two weeks later. Well, so you were here last week. You're on the other side of the house, but now there's this light fixture that's not working over here. And you're just like, son of a bitch. Um, like why call the electrician? Like I was on the other side of the house. What are you doing? Yeah. So you end up owning more than you want to. And the HVAC 2.0 process, it's pretty good at helping you not own things. But we needed to reach down into free quotes. We categorically hate them. <laughs> like Free quotes are basically the reason that shit work gets done. Yep. Because everybody's like, oh, okay, well, what's your price? What's your price? You know, it's coming in. And it's, it's not all price that sells at all. But lots of people think that way. So they drop their pants. And there's a good chunk of the market, like the bottom 40% of the market, they're going to buy on price. You don't want the bottom 40% of the market. I mean, it's usually rentals and stuff anyway. That's chucking a truck stuff. I mean, everybody starting out does that work. Because you you got to know your market. You have to know your market and who your customers are. Not every swinging dick or every customer who calls is yours. And that's what you have to realize. And in the beginning, I mean, but think about it. In the beginning, it's hard for people to think that because they think they got to take every call that comes in. They got to answer everybody and, and they have to do that. But you don't. Not to backtrack, but... On what you said, I do agree on how many things are oversized out there. That's why we try to do some kind of load calculation on every single system. Obviously, if somebody's going from like oil to heat pump or gas to electric or something like that, then you have to. But I don't care if I'm putting the same exact thing in that was in there. Just because it was a 80,000 BTU, two and a half ton system or whatever, doesn't mean I'm putting that back in. Say the last guy fucked up and now we're just going to keep the fuck up going. And then you see electric heat, like people oversize the shit out of electric heat. It's like a two ton system doesn't need, you know, 15 kW or 20 kW of heat, at least not in my area. Exactly. No, it doesn't even mean 10. 10 kW is 34,000 BTUs. If it's a two ton, that's 24. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. You don't need that much. If two tons will carry it, two tons plus, you know, uh, three tons, it'll definitely do it. Yeah. So it just, just proves the sizing, the sale of the system, the knowledge. B- that system is doomed before it was ever installed. Then you have the installation process. If that is done correctly, you know what I mean? So sometimes people lose the war because they've already lost the first two battles. There's no way they can yeah. ever win. And that's what some people need to realize. There's so much that goes into it. And just because, oh, well, this is the way they always did it. Okay, well, we've learned. Okay? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we've gotten better. <laughs> and even if it is, I mean, the 100,000 BTU furnace at 80%, that's 80,000 output. So if you do 196, you just went up by 16,000 BTUs. Yeah. Um, so like, that's not the same size. This may flip your little, little bit. We actually suggest on the free quotes, sticking with what they got size wise, unless the client specifies something different. Cause the one bad part about changing size is you are taking ownership. So if you're super comfortable, okay, maybe you do, but this is where we had to figure out how can we find a, a way to do free quotes that is still in harmony with the way that we do everything else. It's like one way to look at it is a lot of free quotes are very similar to if you're in the dating game, it's going into a bar looking for a one night stand, not a relationship. True. And once you choose that path, it's kind of hard. You're probably not going to meet the parents of the girl that you took home for one night. You know, like that's probably not where that relationship's going. I got game, um, Nate. I can do it. Okay, just great. Kidding. Don't tell my um, wife. I was just kidding, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was years ago. It was a joke. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> I never called her back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. One night. Um, <laughs> there, was, there was a great comedian years ago. I remember uh, he's like, so my girlfriend comes home. She's like, why are you home late? Why aren't you doing this? Why, why not this? You, you suck. And so I told her, why don't you just shut up? On the inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's how and it works. he goes on with the whole rest of the thing. Um, uh. It was a good bit. I, I got to look that one up. Hopefully it's still on YouTube somewhere. Anyway, it's the curse of if, if you're going to keep the doors open to doing the better work, you have to be careful not to close certain doors. And so how we've started to, to set it up and look at it is we view it like choose your own adventure. So do you remember reading those books as a kid? Yeah. Like you get to the end, are you going to go to the mansion or are you going to go to, uh, you know, a cave or whatever? And then like three decisions later, you find out you die. And then you're like, I hope I can remember the page numbers so I can backtrack to where I was and try another (laughs) path. Um, So imagine if you were doing choose your own adventure, but you had a guide next to you that said, "Eh, you might not want to do that. Uh, Or you could do this, but this is what's over there. You could do that. And that's probably what's over there. It's up to you. I'm with you all the way. When that happens, if you have a guide helping you through some choose your own adventure, it reduces the risk. But also when a client makes a decision, when you give them a choice and they make a decision, who owns the responsibility of the results for that decision? They do. Exactly. If you tell a client what to do, who owns the responsibility of that decision? You do. Yeah. Would you prefer not to own responsibility? Yeah, I got enough shit on my plate. Right? Um, well, you want to pop the slides up? I don't want to forget. It's a question. Yeah. I think I know who this person is, but it's Facebook, so I can't see the name. They said, how can an insulation company and an HVAC company work hand in hand? We have that figured out, but that's that's deeper in the process. So the comfort consult can do that to some degree, or sometimes you need to go further and, and do the rest. So it, yeah, I'll answer that question. So let's tackle a couple of things here. If you want to put up my silly slide here. Ooh, blow. This is a, a show that we've just started. It's on Monday nights at 8.15. We're doing a, a mixture of technical and then talking through like the stuff that we do. And we're going to move into doing case studies and stuff. But right now we're talking about mechanical ventilation, fresh air ventilation. Oh, and nice. this was Monday's show where we are big fans of pressurization, which is blowing into a house. And actually, all it is is you you punch a duct outside through the rim joist or wherever you can get to outside, and you plug uh, that into the return. Mm -hmm. Um, And you bring in a little bit of outside air. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. There's all kinds of benefits to that way of doing things. So I won't spoil it all, but uh, if you want to go back, like it's the HVAC 2.0 YouTube channel I post in the group. Is it okay if I post those in your group? 
yeah. um, when I'm doing that. So next week we are talking about reheat dehumidification, which is like a random feature I have a total man crush on. But uh, it basically mm-hmm. gives you pretty damn good dehumidification because shoulder seasons are real pain in the ass. Things get humid and sticky and nasty, but there's not a lot of cooling load, but there's still lots of humidity that needs to get dealt with. So mm-hmm. houses get gross and things get sick and you get mold and rot and all kinds of stuff. And uh, reheat is a way to get dehumidification without requiring a separate dehumidifier. So that's what we're talking about next week. And it can fit. I know so many people that want dehumidifiers don't want the space to put them. Right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, particularly you get into like attic jobs or something like that. You're like, good luck. Um, yeah. Or sometimes little garages. Mechanical rooms. Yeah, little small mechanical rooms. And yeah. I'm like, I can't put this in properly because right. I don't have enough space to do it. Yep. But if you run a heat pump only system, it only works for those because you can only add heat to the airflow after the coil. So like a furnace is before the coil. So you'd be putting heat into the coil. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Um, buddy of mine, I don't know if you know Tim Portman. I may be a nerd. He's a super duper nerd. We have arguments over the most asinine stuff. You'd laugh, but we love each other. But uh, <laughs> he got his hybrid. So he runs his furnace and then turns around and runs the air conditioner and then runs the furnace and then runs the air conditioner. And he ends up kind of getting <laughs> it done that way. So, you know, whatever. He found a way to hack it. There we are. HVAC rookie. I'm glad you appreciate that. It was good to meet you <laughs> in Atlanta too. Anyway, I'm just making people aware of that because maybe they'll find that fun. So it's it's mainly technical stuff what we're talking about, but it's also how do you present things to homeowners in a way where you're not being pushy or anything like that, but you're educating them well, and then they end up choosing the better stuff, which is part of what we'll look at a little later anyway. Yeah, and I feel like I only say that every fucking week, so... Yeah. <laughs> That's why I call communication, not sales. But right? yeah. yeah, so exactly. I agree. So guys, real fast, I was going to do this at some point, but on this, make sure go check this out. HVAC 2.0 show when they do this, because they give some very, very good technical information. They get into the nitty gritty details of things. It's some really good conversations. So make sure you go check that out. Appreciate the plug, Gil. This one, I, I got a bunch of comments where people like, this was the best one yet, but I, I've been building a case. You know how it is when you have a long argument, you still have to do the first parts of the argument. That's where I was. I just wanted to flash this for a minute uh, so that you understand like what we're working on. The 2.0 process is pretty damned intense, but this is the whole thing to see at once. And so you're not going to see all this, but it's software largely under the skin like software as a service kind of thing. And Mm -hmm. what it does is it keeps you on the path because there's like a very narrow path of the the way to do it and do things in the right order. And I mean, all all this makes sense, really. I mean, when you're putting a system in, I mean, you you need to braze it before you release the refrigerant, right? Yeah. Um, Like sales is the same way or communication or whatever you want to call it. I don't view what we do selling. We, we say that if ever you feel like you're selling when you're using 2.0, you're doing it wrong. All you're doing is educating and offering that choose your own adventure. You can do this. You can do this. Here's what's likely to happen. Here's your prices. Which one works better for you, Mrs. Jones? And Amen. if you genuinely don't care which way they go, it's amazing how often they pick expensive stuff. <laughs> Yeah. Like, if you push them, they buy cheap. And if you just leave them the hell alone, it's amazing how often they buy good stuff. But this is a slide I wanted to get to. This is what choosing your own adventure does. Do you remember American Beauty? Did you see this movie? Oh, damn right. Yeah, too. So I love it when he's, he's got that sales job and he's like, fuck this shit. And he just <laughs> he gets up and leaves and walks out and he goes to the McDonald's basically. And the lady's like, do you, do you want a manager's job? And he says this, I'm looking for the least possible amount of responsibility. <laughs> um, and uh, this is how we think we should really view the communication and sales thing. So like every time you offer somebody a choice and they decline options, they are uh, progressively owning more and more of that result. So at worst, like if, if they choose really, really badly, and some people are stupid about it, frankly, but that's okay. Like you have to be okay with it. Like if they're going to go to the cliff, you know, like, all right, I'll take your money. I'll listen to you as you fall. If they're making the choice, that's their choice. But by doing that, you manage to pull off what we call responsibly avoiding responsibility. And so worst case scenario is you and the client co-own responsibility. So you're in a partnership together. 
So it's not like parent child or like some the master servant bullshit. It's you're adult adult. You're talking to each other like human beings. And it's it's just a it's a much better way to do stuff. It's like the matrix, you have to set everything up just so or like it's it's really easy to fall off and so that's what the the software ends up serving as. It helps keep you on the path. Or another way to look at it is like when you take kids bowling and you pull up the bumpers so they can't gutter ball. Yeah. That's basically what it's meant to do. I don't really view it as software, but it's like, but it, it, it is. Getting to free quotes, this is kind of what I wanted to talk about tonight. The curse of if you offer a free quote, but you don't have a secondary paid service of some kind, you're going to get stuck doing free consulting. Little Johnny's room, you know, it's just, it's, it's too damn cold in the winter. We don't know what's going on. And all of a sudden they're dragging you all over the house and you're trying to figure shit out. And you're like, I'm not going to get paid for this. And if you do kind of figure out what's going on and you give them a scope, they take the scope and they shop it to the next guy. Can you do this, but cheaper? Well, they want the problem fixed until they realize what it costs to fix it. So, Yep, yep, exactly. In that case, like you haven't seen if they have enough pain to justify the money that it takes to fix it. If you can slow them down a little bit and let them think... It's amazing how often they're like, okay, well, we'll do this. And then like, you're not selling a $20,000 piece of equipment. You're lifting them from a $10,000 bargain basement to 20. So if you can build 10 grand in value, they'll buy it. Yeah. Amen. Um, uh, and, but again, like you're not pushing it on them. You're not shoving it on them. You're just, you're offering it. Okay. We could do this and you know, it might help. The beginning of the process here, are there uh, comfort problems to solve? So there's really two questions in the process, fundamentally. The first one is, are there comfort problems to solve? And we ask them four questions. Are the rooms don't heat well? or the rooms don't cool well? Does anybody have any respiratory issues like asthma and allergies? And then are there any moisture problems? And it's not a yes or no, it's a scale of zero to 10. And then we take that score and we lean them towards either a comfort console or a free quote. And what it ends up doing, you, you become the guide. So as much as some of us want to be Luke, Luke got his ass kicked. <laughs> Very true. Very I mean, well, Obi-Wan ended up, yes, getting cut in half by Vader. Still, like the teachers are really the better place to be because the teachers teach you what to do and then it's your choice to do what you want to do. And then it leaves you, again, responsibly avoiding responsibility. So they're, they're choosing their own path piece by piece. So you just you, you keep revealing the path to them one step at a time. Love it. And so this is what it ends up being. So a comfort console, yes, it involves a blower door, but it's it's really easy to do. Like you need to know how to run a blower door. But if you're a technician and you can't learn how to run a blower door in like two hours, um, you shouldn't be a technician. It's not that hard. Um, I agree. Like it's just not that bad. And you're going to do some stupid shit. You'll probably do like I did and went down to the basement after I turned it on for the first time in my house and I find flame shooting 18 inches sideways out of my boiler. Um, <laughs> I've never gone up basement steps that fast before or since. Turn those items off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I, I showed a picture of the thing to my buddy, Rich McGrath, who's a wethead. So he's a big boiler guy. And he's like, what the hell did you do to that? I'm like, don't ask. <laughs> I was an idiot. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't understand HVAC at all. What's this thing? It's this thing that burns shit over here. I don't know what <laughs> it is. Anyway, so the free quote, what we suggest is it's, there's, there's no consulting. You need to have that boundaries the boundary there. So I will quote you to change out what you have for what you have, or if you give me a specification or what size you want, I'll do it to that sign here. But if you want any help with anything, we have this service over here. And a lot of how to look at it is you're getting paid to do a quote and it leads to very high closing ratios and big tickets, you know, like 20 grand tickets are just normal. Oftentimes, you know, 30, 40, 50 come out of that too. And again, you're not pushing anything. You're just offering them stuff. And then people kind of say, yes, it's weird. And so here's the four questions, by the way. So this is part of what pops out of the the free quote report, which is most of the way done. I can show you this. The next part I look at, I'm like, oh God, that's not ready yet. Um, <laughs> I've got a whole bunch of stuff. Tomorrow night, we've got our biweekly meeting of uh, fine bugs and we make a list and then the programmer goes through them. You can see how this works. So like this is actually a high score for a free quote. So this person probably would have done a comfort consult instead. So they pay you, you know, on the low end, 300 bucks and the high end, a thousand bucks, you know, what you charge, whatever you want to charge. If they go through this quiz and they get a quick little bit of education, like I managed to get it down to less than 10 minutes of video. And that's hard. Like how HVAC works and like the static pressure I teach in 90 seconds, that was tough to get that short. But if they watch that little bit of education, 
all of a sudden they understand that HVAC isn't all the same. And then this is the rest of it. So the, the question earlier about how do you get the insulation contractor to work together with you? So it's going to come after the comfort consult because the comfort consult answers the second question, which is, is HVAC alone likely to solve the problems the client wants to solve? And what has blown our doors off is all we ever saw were really screwed up houses. So uh, like I ended up feeling like Freud, like how come everyone wants to screw their mom? It's like, no, not everybody. It's just the weird ass clients that you managed to get. Um, So like, how come every house is just totally royally screwed up? And like, no, they're not. So when our guys start going out there and testing, we're like, these houses, like, let's just put the right HVAC in. And like, it may not fix the problem, but it'll blunt it enough that they'll probably just say that's fine and move on with life. And if it's not, and we aren't oversized, it too badly, we can always do insulation work later. Yeah, true. Um, and so, like, what we're seeing is 70% of people, 70 to 80% are doing free quote, 20 to 30 are doing the consult, and almost everyone ends up just doing HVAC. One out of 100 or one out of 1,000 does this, but this is where we started. So, this yeah. is the really badass projects that I'm known for. Yeah, Um, this is where we started. So we started with this on the process and then we were like, all right, so how do we actually get this to where other people can do it? Not dumb it down, but make it simplified. It it needs to be like a McDonald's, you know, make it repeatable, but real fast before you move on, just so people know the difference between the simple replacement and the tailored replacement could be like 10 grand. Easy, easy. You know, just know that that one step that you just skipped could be a huge difference. That could be selling that base, you know, 15.2 SEER 2 or whatever it is versus, you know, a 20 something SEER inverter. So it's big difference. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge. I mean, the margins that are involved there are really nice and it's a much fatter commission check. And And they're happy. And they're happy. Yeah, exactly. So like everybody wins. Yeah. They write a bigger check and they leave giving you a five. This is what I was talking about with Coral and before. You just got a bigger ticket. The customer loves you, leaves you a five-star review. You just made more commission. And when you go back, your boss has got a big-ass grin on his face like, way to go, man. This is what we're talking about just by educating the customer and giving them options to think. So I don't want to keep repeating myself, but... We're on the same page, Gil. Sweet. Um, (laughs) Because, I mean, it it is. Like, uh, I remember learning years ago, telling is selling. Yeah. Um, so like you're just trying to bring people up to speed and as long as you do it in a way that's not too boring or anything like that, you know, it's, it's okay. For reference to like free quotes on the high side, you're usually going to see like 50% closing ratios. And like a lot of people are like 10, 20, 30, you know, there's, it kind of depends on the, on the person, but the consults we're seeing 60 to 70% short term. So like within a month and then 80 and 90% over a year. Because you end up giving them this this custom specification, and we help teach people how to write a spec that will scare the shit out of your competitors. But it's not actually that hard to do. <laughs> like, it's just not that big of a deal. Um, yeah. But when you write it all out on paper, you're like, oh, Jesus, we're not going to do that. That's terrifying. So if they do get a bid from someone else, it comes in higher than you because they're they're giving them a screw you price or a fear price. And so, like, these come back. I saw this. So my closing ratio on comprehensive planning processes, once we change to the process that there is here, my closing ratio is 92%. And of the handful of clients that that didn't go with me, all but two actually did projects. They just didn't involve me because I'd given them enough of a plan. They just went and did it themselves. You know, some people do that sort of thing. I mean, this is super effective here, but this is so hard to learn. It's such a big lift. Like it's, it's not an easy thing to teach. So anyway, that's enough on all that. Let's see. Uh, we can come back to that. I'm curious what's going through your mind. Cause I just kind of hammered you and I, I want to stop talking for a minute. No, it's good. So we can switch off of this. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Well, me and you talked about this in Atlanta, so I love it. And this is kind of what we tried to do already in a nutshell. So Mm -hmm. I told you times that we charge, I get it. There's some people that I'm not going to go through the work of designing a system and going through all this stuff just for them to say no. So I'll, oh, this is what you're looking for. I'll put a number on it. If they decide, yeah, I want to do it, okay, now you've invested in me, I'll invest in you. Now I'll go out, I'll design it. And then it's like, hey, I know we said the initial price to do this was going to be 14000 you know, but we should really add this or filtration or add a return here and blah, blah, blah. 
you know, so really I think it's going to be closer to 22,000, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Yeah. But I agree. I love the, the way you do that. And I like the drawing because it simplifies it. Cause I feel like I say that all the time, but that made it so easy to see it in black and white. So I'm glad that you decided to show the illustration because that just makes so much sense. So if you listen to this audio, you might want to go watch this episode video so you can see the visuals that Nate put up here. Most of us go out to a free quote. Customers got, you know, three companies coming out to look, hey, everybody's quoting me two tons, 16 sear heat pump. That's what I want. And you can go in and be like, okay, I can give you a free quote for that two ton 16 sear. Or, you know, you have issues in the home, like actually talk to them, get to know them. Yeah. All of a sudden you can go down and I can build you something that's less cookie cutter and more custom just to you if you'd like. But for me to do that, I'm going to be here for a little while and it's 300 bucks, 300, but whatever. Like yeah. Nate said, you charge whatever your time means to you. It takes you on a whole other avenue. It sets you apart from the next guy, which I say at the end of every show, and you're giving a better long-term solution to your customers at the same time, educating them at the same time, getting way higher tickets. To me, it's a no brainer. I love it, man. Yeah. It's what, what we're trying to do here is make it where it's repeatable. So like the, both of the paths, the, the free quote path and the comfort console path, they just have a script. So, I mean, like, can you read? <laughs> Are you okay with other human beings? Um, Sometimes. You'll be all right. So, like, it, it's actually kind of an interesting thing. We haven't tried this yet, but I'm, I'm looking forward to somebody trying it. If you hire a newbie and you're not quite sure what the hell to do with them yet, send them out on a lead and see what happens. Obviously, they have to ride along with you for a while. But if they have a good process, well, like, like we were talking about with uh, Coral before the show she's got this process and she just sticks to it and she knocks it out of the freaking park all the time like this that's what this is so uh, pick your process there's lots of processes out there this one what's unique is it lets you get into fixing anything like no matter what the problem is there is a path here to do it it may be intense it may be more than you what you want to do but the path is there because, man, I've had some gnarly work come my way. I'm like, oh, geez, how the hell are we going to figure this out? I feel like Indiana Jones. What are we going to do next? I don't know, honey. I'm just making this up as you're going along. Um, like you, you do some planning, but you have to think about it. But like for that, you need a guild to work with. So you yeah. need some other people that are smart as part of it. But a lot of it's just experienced and understanding. And you, you also need somebody backed up. When we were younger and like somebody's like, I really like that girl. Like she likes you. Go freaking ask her out. Like, look, you, you can see and like they, they can't see that the girl's looking at them. She'd go out on a date. They can't see it, but you can. And so having a guild together is really important there. So if you have a really gnarly either client or house, we can have a discussion about what's the best best way to tackle that. And then the process also helps keep you from going and spinning off out of control and then you know owning stuff you shouldn't own. Everything in there, like the comfort consult questions, those questions are all in there because I got bit or somebody I know got bit by not asking them. So like, just check this box. There's some that won't apply. Like you're not going to ask about ice dams, but just ask the questions. And if you document that, and they, they come back to bite you later. It's like, well, you told me this wasn't a problem. Like, am I supposed to be psychic? Yeah, right. One thing I will say that, that I give to you about the HVAC 2.0 stuff is since you've built this, it's how you just said the guild. It's, it's more than just a program, a software, a guide, that yeah. it really is a team of people. Like, they're not alone. You know, you're not going to go out there by yourself. Like, here, here's the playbook. Just go out there and... Yeah. Just follow it to a T that, you know, there's other guys, you know, that they can call on and be like, hey, man, I ran into this and I was thinking about doing ABC. Oh, yeah. well, yeah. I wouldn't worry about B, but I would do A, C and F. I think that's awesome that you built that. So that's amazing, man. Well, thanks. Well, it's it's required to make it work, frankly. We don't really have guilds that much anymore. Although it, really, this is a guild right here, what we're doing. I mean, this is a couple of masters talking to each other, basically. Or, I mean, maybe we're journeymen. I don't know. But it's two people of similar level talking to each other and I just kind of working stuff out. And then the people that are just coming up through the ranks can listen to this stuff and learn. Yeah. Um, 
Was it Hughes Man? Yeah, Nate the House Whisperer. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we got a whole bunch of people in the chat. Yeah, I haven't flown through all that stuff. I, I've seen a bunch of it moving. It's good. I love that you yeah. get all the chat. Mr. Jason Johnson came in. What's up, brother? Will Speed. Hello, hello. What's up, man? And I already said hi to Miss Jennifer and her husband, Val. I finally got to meet Jennifer on the podcast I did with her and Mr. Hughes Man and the Misfits of HVAC podcast. I was honored to be the first guest. So that was uh, last Saturday. So that was cool. Oh, sweet. That's fine. I see HVAC blogger agreed will speed. You win the customer's trust and they will buy anything from you just because they know you're honest with them. Totally. Like just, just listen to them and offer them their options and don't try to push them any one direction. Like, and don't try to prejudge them. You know, it, you can't afford this. I had one lady, it was a, a condo, it was a $90,000 condo. She bought a $25,000 package for HVAC and a little bit of air sealing for me. It was a green speed, like it's a freaking expensive. And this was 25 grand in 18. So like, that's a much bigger 25 grand than it is now. And I'm just like, really? You took the top of the line? And actually, as it turned out, I feel bad. It was the wrong choice because that unit only dialed down to 55%. And if she would have done the five-stager, the step below, it would have dialed down to 25% because the damn thing shut off all the time. It was oversized. We, we went from a 70,000 BTU furnace to a two-ton heat pump, and it shut off. Oh. Uh, the load uh, that came in at like 22, but the real load was more like 17. It's like crap. You have a question real fast. Jared, I don't know Jared's last name, so I don't want to butcher your buddy, but he said any HVAC 2.0 case studies out in Phoenix, Arizona? Case studies, no, not contractors out there. But I'll tell you what, the shows on Monday, once I get through this dumb series, I kind of regret biting off what I bit off because <laughs> I've got like 500 slides for these five episodes. It's just stupid how much time I put into putting all this together. But it's like it's an argument I've been wanting to make forever. But after that, we're going to switch over to just basically going through a project a week and like a topic a week and just kind of going through things. So tune in and you can see what's being done and how. Because sometimes when you're looking at it from the outside, it's like it's magic. Like nothing we do is magic at the end of the day. A service tech that can just go and figure stuff out and change things out, I view that as magic. Like that's incredible to me. I'm reasonably mechanical, but I'm not that mechanical. I feel like Michael Jordan's untalented son. <laughs> uh, my, my, my dad was this incredible mechanical savant, the likes of which I just haven't seen. He was this insane artist who could just like see how things work. He'd look at something and tell you, I think this is how it's made. And I'd go look it up and I'll be damned. That was how it was made. And he didn't know that. He just kind of looked at it and intuited because he knew all this stuff. So like anytime I came behind my dad, I'm like, I'm just an asshole. <laughs> so, so I just, I never really dug into getting good at the mechanical stuff. I'm much better at the conceptual things and then figuring things out and like teaching them. That's more of what we're good at or doing some of the crazy shit in the houses we've done. We got another no. questions we should look at here. Well, real fast. I, I would like to keep talking to Jared because he says that we're a very unique market. So Jared, when you say you're unique, what do you mean? Like how Phoenix, how dry it is and stuff like that. Is that what you're referring to? Because the HVAC 2.0, like, yes, it's sales. But just so you know, a lot of this is, like he said, a lot of it is you end up doing just the HVAC. But the whole point behind it is to take the blinders off and look at the whole envelope, the whole house, you know, so there's more to it. So this could be a insulation job. This could be somebody does windows or, or, or whatever it may be. I know you say normally you don't do windows, right? Yep. Nope, we don't. Although, ironically, all of our houses here, we're putting windows in. But it's because they don't work. You replace windows when they're broke, not for energy reasons. No, I have to tend to agree. I've learned that over time. He says, we have 115 degree days with 10% relative humidity. You know what, Jared? There is a fellow to look up. Dang it. Why can't I think of his last name? Mike. Energy Docs, Redding, California. McFarland. Mike McFarland. Look him up. He's got a Facebook page. I haven't seen him on there in forever. In Redding, California, the same sort of thing where their design temps like 110 and it's super dry. They're inland enough uh, in California. We view Mike and his other uh, fellow guys. It's called Dry Climate. And in fact, the Dry Climate Conference may be worth looking up. Uh, I was one of the few humid climate guys to go uh, back in 2015. But those guys are like NASA. They're doing really edgy, crazy stuff where the stuff that we're trying to do is hopefully repeatable. And that's the challenge. NASA's sweet and cool, but 
you know, there's only one NASA, or now we've got SpaceX, but it's not like there's a whole bunch of companies launching uh, rockets. And sorry, my dumb dog's barking out there. Um, okay. Welcome to the holler. We live in a West Virginia holler. This is an old coal camp. <laughs> this was all coal miners that lived where we live now. I know coal miners now. I did, didn't think that would be part of my life, but here we are. I've got friends that are retired coal miners. Yeah. Uh, I know the song Coal Miner's Daughter, the movie. I, know, I mean, actually, my wife's grandma, great grandma, was in it. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, for real. Her family was from Eastern Kentucky and then also West Virginia. So we got used to coming down here. We've always liked it down here and it's cheap. Uh, we we bought a house for 70 grand with four oh, acres. Geez. It's not a nice house, but it's a house. And where it is is beautiful. The, the national park's half mile behind me. That pays for There's itself. A, maybe. Oh, yeah. It does pay for itself on the, yeah, we've got the camper that we rent yeah. as an Airbnb. And that, that thing makes enough money to make the house more than free to live in. So it pays the mortgage and everything. That's awesome. Um, Wasn't that Loretta Lynn in that movie? Yes. Yes. That was a good movie too. Yeah. Um, My mom's an old country woman. So I, she clean on Sundays, listen, you know, to uh, Patsy Klein and you know, that song. What is it? Yep. I forget. I'm going to go down a rabbit hole here. Um, <laughs> I see moonshine on there. Uh, it's a, I think it's a little less than it used to be. I think you're less likely to get shot going around the woods now. Um, <laughs> that used to be it. If you got so too close to somebody still, you 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 might get made dead. It's kind of funny. Anyway, Jared, l- look up Mike McFarland of Energy Docs. But what we do would totally work for that too. Like it's, you're just dry climate and it's hot, like whatever. It's actually easier. The humidity is way the hell harder. <laughs> Yeah, four to five ton, and it's it's the wrong freaking equipment for the most part. So if you start learning that stuff, actually, uh, you want to put the slide back up. I want to show the the next one. Here we are. This is probably something that a lot of people don't know. A load calc gives you really false confidence, frankly. You get a load calc, and it comes in at 32,353. If you don't know some other pieces of information, namely blower door and see past energy use, understand what their set points are. You know, some people are 65 degree heating people. Some people are 75 degree heating people, and that can definitely move your usage and your your load. You can have these huge swings in sizing. Like you can be off by a ton, no problem. And oftentimes two. I never realized I learned, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm sorry. No, people fine. People messed up getting the north, south, east, and west side of the house. Right? Like I've seen north and south change and it literally changes it by a ton, a ton and a half. Yep. Just by the north and south being mixed up. Yeah, exactly. So like load calcs are uh, sadly an educated guess is what they end up being if you don't have extra info. So what we're suggesting, this is what, what's going to be in the free quote report here very shortly. It's one of these was in and the other one, I'm like, crap, that didn't work. I got to send it back for more programming. Didn't show where the, the current size was. And like the cooling range, I, I wasn't paying enough attention and I made that too wide. It's Cooling's not going to be that wide. Heating's really wide. So like heating in a cold climate, like Minneapolis, no joke, just by swinging blower door, air leakage, from numbers that I've seen that are really tight to numbers that I've seen on really loose, it can be plus or minus 70%. So like this 20,000 to 70,000 heat load, that's legit. I've seen swings that wide just with blower door. Now it's cold climate, but even in cooling, like you can so easily be off half a ton and you can really easily be off one or two. And that's that's oftentimes the wrong piece of equipment. Like if you're trying to deliver comfort, you want that system running as much as possible. And like variable speed, it doesn't save you. It really doesn't. Like a four ton that dials down to 25% goes to a ton, but that only covers maybe a third, 40% of the year. True. So the rest of the time it's oversized. And that, where that gets really challenging is your dehumidification. And like we're seeing higher dew points. Like, I don't know if you know this, but dew points are up two to five degrees, mostly within our lifetimes. Fucking El Nino. Yeah, and part of it is. Yeah, yeah. There's all kinds of shit going on behind that. The nighttime temperatures are generally higher. The daytime aren't. But nighttime is what controls humidity. Because the colder it gets at night, like if it's 60 degrees at night, the dew point can't be above 60 degrees because physics. No, that makes sense. But if it only goes to 65, the dew point stays at 65, and that's that's pretty muggy. 
you know, it's not, it's not awful. Like 70 is where I consider like get the knife out so I can cut the air, but all kinds of things start going sideways in houses. What we're trying to do with this free quote process is we want to plant seeds of doubt in, in homeowners. Like we honestly don't know what size you need because we don't at the end of the day. Like particularly if you're talking equipment that has half ton sizes, uh, we really don't. You know, like Daikin Fit does half ton sizes. Ah, dew point. I've been talking dew point forever, Will. John Oaks made me a, a meme a while ago. Is a guy rubs a, a a bottle and Genie pops out, and Genie's like, "What's your first wish?" And he's like, I, "I I wish for humidity control on thermostats by dew point." And <laughs> the the Genie says, "Yeah, what the hell's up with that? Good wish, man. You still got three wishes." <laughs> <laughs> One thing I love about this is a lot of times when you bring people on here and you talk about the sales process or offering, most people are known for their their sales. And I love it when you come on and talk about it because you come on and talk about the X's and O's, the technical side of it, which therefore gives you the answers for the offering and the sales side, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? So yeah. that, that's why I love our conversations and people can see the other side when these things are done right. And being a good tech, you should be better at offering things to customers than anybody. Yeah, right. You are by definition good at fixing shit. Exactly. So let's fix the whole damn house and sometimes the client while you're at it. Um, <laughs> Because uh, that's part of it. Like we, we, we joke, like, you know, if, if you and I owns the, the same house in two different parallel universes and we did it just the way we wanted, we'd, we'd pick something different. You know, I, I, it may be a lot different. It may be a little different. There's what the house needs, but then there's also what the clients wants to do. And so you're creating a custom solution for them. Yeah. And actually, let me flip to this. So did you uh, read the HVAC chapter of my book? Do you remember? It might have been too long now. It's um, been a little bit, but I, I did read it. Yeah. Okay. So it's uh, my, my partner was funny. I showed it to him and he's like, I didn't know you're doing a kid's book for adults. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. You, you can read my book for the pictures. I'm like Playboy. <laughs> I read it for the articles. Uh, yeah. It's got a bunch of illustrations and stuff, but I talk about in that the six functions of HVAC and I look at a car and what it should do. So like uh, these are the six functions. So load matching, it's being able to put out what the, the house or the car needs at any given moment. A car can do that. You know, you got variable heat output, cool output, and then you got, you know, at least four fan speeds. And like, I was thinking about this as my wife's 1992 POS Corolla. I, mean, I was actually working at a dealership when that car rolled in and it had like a rust hole in the side of it that you could put a softball through. Mm -hmm. uh, like what a piece of shit. And my, <laughs> she was my girlfriend at the time. And she's like, I'm looking for a cheap car that's kind of reliable. And I'm like, motherfucker. And I go and I talk to my boss. I'm like, so can I take that car home tonight? And I did, and she bought it, and we drove that damn, damn thing for a couple of years, and we made money on it when we sold it. Nice. <laughs> so, um, it's a win-win. Yeah, it was a winner. But that POS has load matching because you can vary what its heating and cooling output is. You can't do that with a single-stage piece of equipment, and that's like 85% of what's sold. Yep. Dehumidification, if you oversize, that that kills it. It's, this is one thing that really bothers me about the increased sear. A lot of how they're getting to the higher efficiency is they're doing more cooling and less dehumidification. So be really damn careful with those, those units now. Like you're going to see mold that wasn't the problem before. I hate to use the M word, but it's coming. In fact, I, I gave a presentation back in 28 called the coming mold explosion. It's here. Beware of dehumidification. And then you want a system that mixes, which is basically you have a fan that doesn't use a lot of energy. So if you have an ECM and low static, you mix the house really nice. You just stir it like a vinaigrette all the time. And so if you have rooms that are a little too hot or a little bit too cold, it at least mixes them. So it's not perfect, but it takes the edges off. You know, it's yeah. like stirring a vinaigrette, but not stirring it quite fast enough. And sometimes it's fast enough. You know, it depends on your fan speed and what the house needs. And then you need good filtration and fresh air. Uh, coming in from outside, which is the whole series we're on is that, and then humidification, depending where you are. So like, Gil, you're not really going to worry about it. Like, that's not a DC thing. That's just not that bad. But what you end up doing is you show people a basic system with a basic install, and look, it's all frowny faces. 
And I showed this to a friend of mine on Twitter that I was on his podcast. It's a clean energy thing. So I'm, I'm all over the damn map <laughs> working on a piece of legislation right now, too. I mean, it's like I'm, I'm seriously all over the damn map. He's like, I am offended that you would even try to sell me that piece of equipment. And like he was spitting venom. Like you could just <laughs> tell that he was pissed. And I'm like, John, we talked about what your house has. That's what you bought. That's what 85% of people have. But if you don't understand what's good and what's bad, you don't know. So this is just education. When you help people understand what it is, I mean, the, the biggest curse of a lot of the, the sales spreadsheets that I see for this sort of thing are like the offerings. It's like, so what's the difference? Well, it's two C or higher. What does that mean? It's two C or higher. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, like, like nobody knows what it is. Well, it's more efficient. Okay. But like realistically, going from a 16 to an 18 C is going to save you between 20 and 50 bucks a year. Who gives a shit? It doesn't matter. Yeah. But if you're moving from two stage to variable speed, are your dehumidification's way better and it'll vary down lower and it's going to run longer, slower, and your house is going to be way more comfortable. And like it's even if you have a high static system, it's mostly going to be running at low stage. So it's not going to be crazy high static. So it's going to be quiet. Um, you know, there's like there's all the sweetness that comes with these better systems, but most people suck at selling them. Yeah. Um, I sold one two stage and that was Habitat. I didn't have the budget to do variable speed. Otherwise, I have sold nothing but variable speed in my past. And uh, I just wanted to show this. This is uh, in the software now. Still needs some more tweaking, but we're close. I was hoping we would be done by the show and we're not. Um, it's close, but it's not. So there's two different ways that you do it. So of the six functions, three of them are done by the equipment. So load matching, you know, that's sizing and whether it's one speed, two speed or variable. Dehumidification is a function of sizing and then what you can do with coil temperature. And mixing is a function of the fan, you know, the air handler. So this is how we're giving like a suggestion for how to offer things to clients. So first they choose what piece of equipment they want. And like over here, best, this is badass stuff. You know, pick your brand. I was thinking Carrier and Bryant here, but whatever you sell, you know, that's your top of the line. And then you pick your install. So you're going to have to do a little bit of the price compete kind of thing. So it's like, look, basic system, basic install, but the basic install actually is a downgrade. We're going to give you money back because we're going to let you keep your piece of shit one inch filter that I wouldn't sell my mom, let alone my worst enemy. And all of a sudden they're like, oh, well, maybe I do need that media filter after all. <laughs> so it's just a different way to come at things. And like the better system includes a fresh air duct, which like this is what we're talking about right now on the 2.0 show. And then uh, the top of the line, you can offer whatever. I, I put a ventilating DHU in here, but there's other ways to, to get that done. And then like a Haven air quality monitor and controller. But one important thing to note, because this is a free quote and we are not sizing, you can if you want, but we recommend not because that's that's more things that you're you could own. See down here in the smiley faces, there's a happier face than what I'm using here. But you can't have that because we don't know that it's the right system. Hmm. I love sense? it. That you're not offering one of the electronic air cleaners because I like the four inch a filter and like the that. electronic, both of them. Like well, the, no, the I, I like the medias better than the electronics. I don't know. To me, that's what I give on our best options. Unless somebody asks for an electronic, I don't offer it because I don't think it's worth the money. No, it's not. Nobody changes them or cleans them. I mean, a, a good media filter, you can leave it in for a year and it's not ideal, but the system will probably survive. Yeah, I agree. Well, I had a client in Pittsburgh and it's like, yeah, the guy services it every year. I'm like, it's not wired. And his coil was clogged. If you have a physical filter in there and it's a media filter with a halfway decent seal, I don't know why I didn't connect the dots. This is where it's nice to have friends because I, I, I'm not dumb, but I'm not the smartest guy. I was with Jim Bergman because he, he put in a badass HVAC system for his office uh, inside True Tech Tools. And he's like, see this trap here? It's a clear trap. Like, see how it's crystal clear? He's like, that's because the filter's working. You only get gunk and like a uh, drain snot because your filter's not doing its job. Yep. And I'm like, holy crap, I just hadn't thought about that. So uh, I, I learned that from him as well. Yeah, yeah. It's a, Jimmy's good for learning all kinds of stuff and also getting made fun of. The dude's love language is mockery. Um, <laughs> uh, totally is. He's hilarious. I mean, it made me nervous at first and now it's just fun. 
anyway, does this make sense what we're doing here? Like we're, we're trying to plant some seeds of doubt about sizing for people and like, well, we can help you with that, but that's a paid service or we can just put in what you got. I or love it. Get, or if you're comfortable, okay, you can, it's up to you. But I mean, the, the more you change, the more you own. And the goal here is to not own shit. So like, it's a free quote, ma'am. Like there's nothing involved. Like some places you're going to have to put things in and I'm hoping to maybe get a tool built that does this automatically where if it has square footage, you're built in zip code, it will give you a rough range based on some just really basic assumptions. And it can be like, look, it could be here. It could be here. I don't know what's right. Yeah. Um, and if you, if you want to figure that out, you know, we can figure that out, but that's, that's not a free quote. So anyway, you can kill the slide now. We need people to look at our ugly faces, not my damn slides. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think slides were, were good, man, because it, it really explained it a lot more being able to look at it and see it. And okay, I, I love the way that you offer that. I mean, I've told you the way I offer things and I, yeah. I, definitely, I do things different than a lot of people do. But even looking at that makes me want to change a few things on the way that we do it ourself you know not all of our guys can do something like this but you know the ones who can i want them to do that <laughs> you know yeah well they could no no um, they, they could they they could i mean that's that that's what the the process is made to be so that e even your your basic guys can do it the whole thing starts with the four questions like if if, if you if your tech is there servicing something and, you know, the system's 15 years old and he's like, uh, it's, man, this is going to need a repair and it's going to be like four grand. If they really want to give you the four grand, take the money, but at least ask them the questions. Hey, you know, are there rooms that don't heat well? The rooms don't cool well, you know, go through the quiz and y you can be gentle about it. Like, so we can repair this or it may be worth considering because this unit's, you know, an end of useful life. You know, it's like a car with 200,000 miles. It might make it to 300. It might die tomorrow. I don't know. Um, like, I just don't. My my wife's car has 209,000 miles on it. She doesn't want to get rid of it. So we're going to keep driving the damn thing. Mm -hmm. It might die tomorrow. It might make it to 300. My in-laws have the same car. They've got like 303 on their car now. Those little things will go. It's a Toyota. So they last forever. Rounds. Yeah, they do. The key thing is you just ask people. You give them the fork. So, ma'am, it's time to choose your own adventure. We have repair or replace. Can I ask you a couple of questions about the replacement? And then on the replacement, it's, are we going to do a free quote or are we going to do a comfort consult? And the free quote, by the way, it could be a free quote with a trip charge. <laughs> so if you're in high season, charge for that. Like if, if you are banging and there's nothing you can do and like, you know, you can't keep up, charge. Price is how you move things around. And yeah. like the comfort consult, people are going to be nervous about doing that and that's fine. So you can use this process and just do free quotes. And price comfort consults are like a grand or 1500 bucks. And then, you know, you hope somebody doesn't take it. But if they do, at least you paid for a chunk of the blower door. Well, I think we're also going to add where we've changed our club membership. And one of the things is going to be the only people that get free quotes, you have to be a club member. So nice. it just adds another perk. Like, you know, yeah. uh, so you already have when you're showing pricing, club member pricing and yep normal. So you're adding value to that. And it's like, oh, well, you know, oh, do you do free quotes? Well, we only do that for club members. Oh, well, how do I become a club member? You know, know what I mean? Those little perks. They're the only people that we give discounts to. If you're not loyal to us, then we're not loyal to you. That's just how that works. You mm, know? That's, that's fair. And I mean, that, that's where it's going. It's funny. That's like the new way to do the old school way. Because there used to be more loyalty. So like one of the coal miners here, Ken is his name. He's helped us out on our renovations here as we've created some Airbnbs. And it, he knows everybody in town. And like there's the big boxes and he doesn't go to the big boxes. Like I'm, I'm just used to going to Lowe's. You know, I just go Lowe's, Lowe's, Lowe's. And there's literally a lumber yard that is in front of the two houses that we bought. It's across the street is the back of the lumber yard. I can hear their tow motor running around during the day if I'm outside working. And I'm pretty good about going to means, but I'm not perfect. But Ken's always going there. That's all of his first instincts are to go to people that he knows. And that used to be how things were. And the membership's actually not a bad way to kind of bring that back. Yeah. So Chris Young said, you know, I know I have lost money by doing it for free and oversharing what's wrong to fix, et cetera. And then they take it to the next guy who's cheaper. That's exactly the point on why he's saying this. But if I do something in depth, and we talked about this in Atlanta, if I do some in depth 
stuff, which I'm normally not doing for free, but if I do, I'm taking it with me. I'm not leaving it with them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like if you didn't pay for it, can I have that for 200 bucks? That's what he means by for that comfort consult. Maybe you charge a thousand dollars, you know, and then you tell them, Hey, it's a thousand dollars. If you buy the system through me and we do the repairs, you know, I'll give you, you know, 500 of it back Yeah. Yeah. or whatever it is that way that you are paid for your time. Yes. Well, I mean, we all have knowledge, right? Yeah. Like wherever we are in the trade, we know more than a homeowner, whether we're a newbie or whether we're masters. Or if they're um, an engineer. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Um, actually, this, this system works really well with engineers. My best clients are engineers. Um, oh, nice. So it tames them because you're, you're going through step by step and you're helping them understand why and what you're doing. You're like stroking them and soothing them with look <laughs> more numbers and reasoning. You want uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, sorry. It's more the other way around. If anything, um, <laughs> okay, it's more the other way around. If anything, sorry, my mind went the wrong way. I'm just, my awareness <laughs> came out. What the fuck's wrong, Gil? Well, they, 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 they get excited though. That's for sure. They get very excited. So this actually largely defangs engineers because yeah, engineers are a pain in the ass. I used to love proving them wrong. And not that I ever like doing that, but when I would do something and prove them wrong, and they're like, well, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> not like, yeah, motherfucker, uh, I know what I'm doing. It, it is such a human instinct when somebody says, you can't do that. Like, oh, yeah, watch me. And that's such a good thing. Jennifer Manzo asked, uh, are there any Airbnbs on the East Coast? Well, it, ish. We're in West Virginia in the New River Gorge National Park. So we actually, we just put up a Harry Potter themed place like this weekend. So it was the candy house before and just didn't do what, the way we wanted to. It is cool as fuck. Like you walk in, it's like you change worlds and it's this tiny little ranch. It's 672 square feet. The garage at my old house is bigger than this freaking house. Um, <laughs> the garage is 26 by 26. This is 24 by 26. It's a tiny ass little house, but it is cool as hell. It's like changing worlds when you walk through the front door. And guess what? It has badass HVAC. <laughs> It's got a little dike and fit, a ton and a half. And then next door is the game house, which is themed with uh, board games and then so, like Mario, some some old school video games, you know, that you and I grew up with. It's it's just, they're both really fun. And then we have a little camper next to here, which shockingly, you know, I'm into electrification. It's got a mini split. We hacked in a ceiling cassette. That is the most comfortable trailer you will ever stay in in your fucking life. <laughs> it's not bad. The floor is still freaking cold. It's got shell problems. It's actually, uh, it's a good instance of what happens when you have good HVAC in a leaky place. Um, <laughs> it's the floors are still cold as balls. So uh, we're already way over, man. But I, I oh, guess yeah, real yeah. fast before we get into this. So obviously most of the people on here are HVAC technicians. So... Say they get in to a blower door test and there's more than the system. Real fast, let them know what are some of the other things that are done. Like we said, insulation, like some of the other things that can be offered. Maybe not by them, but they work hand in hand with the contractor or another company. Yep. So I should take one step back. So the, the blower door, what that does is measure how much a house leaks. And infiltration it can be anywhere between like 20 and 60% of the load on a house. Might might be as low as 10 if it's super tight, but retrofits, we're never going to see something that low. So you want to understand that. And then part of what you do as well is called zonal pressure diagnostics. It's a fancy word for you throw a hose from the manometer under the door and you close the door and you see what the gauge reads. And if it reads zero, it's all the way inside the house. If it reads 50, it's all the way outside. And it's never either one. But what that lets you find is oftentimes there's one room that's a stinker. So if there's one room that is way leakier than the rest of the house, the heating and cooling load for that house is going to be 50 or 100% higher than other rooms. So you have to get more ductwork to it or deal with the building shell. Star Wars theme. We might. My wife is so not into Star Wars. Uh, she's not a sci-fi person at all. She's not normally fantasy, but she does like uh, Harry Potter. She makes them cool. It's, it's not me. I, I just try to make the damn houses work. Um, <laughs> and like, uh, what, what do you want me to paint today? All right. I do plumbing and electrical and the other stuff. Anyway, if, if you understand where the leaks are and like if you're likely to be able to fix things, if you know where the problems are, then you can talk to an insulation contractor circling back to one of the very early comments. So Uh you can send the insulation contractor the comfort consult report, and then they'll have a pretty damn good idea 
of what they need to go figure out what they need to insulate. Because you just did the first half of the diagnostics for them. Like I told you, I think that question was by Ryan, the owner of my company. Because remember I told you about our merged, you know. Yes. <laughs> so I think that's why he was asking about how to let them work hand in hand. The Facebook yeah. comments don't come in. It just says restream bot. So I'm not sure. But I'm oh, almost positive that that was him who asked that question. So... That's probably what he was saying, how we can make this HVAC company and this insulation company work hand in hand. It really is better HVAC first because insulation companies don't get called that often. HVAC companies are routinely in houses once or twice a year. You know, yeah, insulation like is a one, or 20%. Thing. one and done. Yeah, exactly. So that was the thing that sucked for me is I was always just scratching for the next job. Like it was just never, you get referrals and stuff, but like there, there was no service, you know, there was, there was no back end to it. And then the margins were way smaller than what they are in HVAC too. So, I mean, you're, you're doing smaller jobs for smaller margins that you are constantly out there selling. HVAC is really a pretty good business. It really is. Yes, um, it is. For working together, this, this helps set it up. And yeah, then you can refer things back and forth. Um, I was just talking to someone earlier today. That's what they're doing. They're bouncing things back and forth to each other. And, uh, and customer bases, you know, so we're already doing some stuff like that. You know, once they get their insulation fixed, oh, well, man, you can be even more comfortable if you put this and, you know, different things about bouncing off. So there's definitely, you know, different things to do. So we're excited to see how we can help more people using both avenues. It, exactly. Well, it's, it, and that's important because some houses, like they're screwed up, but they're not that screwed up. So like if you fix the crawl space or you fix the rim joist in the basement, something like that, that might be enough to tip the house and make it controllable. Um, you know, it's it, it, think of a house like a leaky boat. Some of them are just really damn leaky and they have leaks all over the place. But some of them, there's three decent sized leaks. And if you plug those, you're good to go. You're laughing at something. Who made, who said something funny here? Oh, I was just looking oh. over. Rookie said, you know, everyone, my birthday's tomorrow. Happy birthday. A day early. Well, what? Two and a half hours early? Yeah. Thank you. So I'm finally getting out of my 30s. So I'll finally be 40. I'm, I guess I'm finally in almost at the top of the hill when I'm starting my trek down. So... I turned 45 Monday. So, yeah. Ah, yeah. see? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm rolling down the other side. April Fool's Day? Oh, no, no, no. Monday. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. 27th. That's yeah. 27th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was six oh, as a dog God. and doing that show on my birthday. Um, oh, well, shit happens. Um, yeah. The day before was fun. Uh, but I, I should probably say one last thing, just so you know if you want to try this at all. There's two paths on the software, and the one's damn near free. And it's, it's actually free for three months. So you go to app.hvac20.com uh, and it's two zero, not two O. It's free for three months and then it's 10 bucks for the free quote reports and 25 bucks for the comfort console reports. So you can go screw around with it if you want. Um, and there's various training. And then we got the Facebook group and all that stuff for ping me. Rookie, not- you're Mr. Make it a link. Can you put that in the uh, chat for me, brother? So, so that is www. Well, I know the beginning part, but it's uh, it's H- app, H- app like like there's an app for that app dot hvac two o dot com. Uh, okay, the step up version where you you get the guild help and everything is five hundred to start and two hundred a month. So, like if you're doing enough reports and stuff, it makes sense to do that. But if you want to just play around for a little bit and like try the script and you know see what happens, if if you apply a, a process consistently. As long as it's a halfway decent process, good things will happen. So there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, it is cheap as fuck because it's still new. Um, it won't stay that way forever. There you go. It's something. So you can at least try it out. And like the free quote process, it helps you responsibly avoid responsibility. Don't own shit. You don't have to. So I didn't even realize <laughs> Chris Young, I think that was him. He put, when he said getting old and he said <laughs> old balls. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking funny. What, uh, um, Tim, what was that from? Adam Sandler movie, uh, Big Daddy. Uh, that was Big yeah, Daddy. Um, yeah, at the with end, his old his, balls. He's got a plan. Yeah, with his old balls. <laughs> <laughs> I can wipe my own ass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was a great flick. That was college, man. That was a good. Yeah, movie. it was good. Back with, I mean, uh, you see Sandler now, and you're like, the dude's like pushing sixty. Like, what the hell? I wish like Farley was still around, man, because he was one oh, of my favorites. Like that guy was a legend. It sucks. They're yeah. always gone too soon. Yeah. You see some of these real fast. Yeah. So that app is in there. And yes, it is too cheap. Like he said, don't worry when it gets finished. 
Nate's gonna long dick all of you because he's gonna fuck <laughs> that money back. <laughs> yeah, it's not that bad. We're curious to get some people trying out the free quote stuff, but it's not totally ready for prime time. But like I was thinking it would be ready by now. Within the next couple of weeks or a month, it should be. The the goal of the free quote process was to make it so that you feel stupid not using it. That was the goal. We're not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. But that's now, the goal. I'm putting all these lines, I can't stop laughing. So heap, heap hop, heap hop anonymous. <laughs> we can give all the easy ones. <laughs> now you just make me think, Water Boy, you can do it. <laughs> yeah, I just. Oh God, that's fucking hilarious. Well, damn. Sadly, I got to close this show out, man. But Nate, this has been a blast, dude. You know, I love having you on. We always have great conversations. You, you know that you're always welcome here. I know it's been a little bit since the last time, man. Just hit me up, bro. We don't got to wait so long. There's always something we can Next come yeah, talk I mean, about. Yeah, th- this is process stuff, but obviously I'm happy to dive into anything technical. I've been thinking about option. doing an episode uh, just talking about static pressure, to be honest with you, because I feel okay. like a lot of people don't know what they're doing and they don't realize how important it is. That's your blood pressure. I'll send you a link. So, you, uh, Or actually, I can probably put it on the Facebook page or something too. It's a link that goes into my account of 2.0. But one of our videos, like I said, we have a 90-second video on static pressure. We call it duct pressure because homeowners, you tell them static pressure and it's like explaining the the punchline of a joke. Like, well, now it's not funny. You know? yeah. <laughs> um, like we have to educate them. Duct pressure. It's the pressure. Well, not your mom, duct. but just, you know, the mom, you know? Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just ruined it all. Um, instead of, uh, that's funny. I don't care who you are. That's more yeah. of what we want. But if you call it duct pressure, homeowners follow along pretty easy. And you help them understand that it's like blood pressure. So I've got a 90 second video on that. And that's also part of the free quote process. We offer duct pressure testing. You don't have to do it and they don't have to do it, but you offer it. And actually one of the goals there, one last thing, and then we'll we'll close off since we keep doing references. As soon as you collect any amount of money from someone, you are a consultant, not a salesperson. So think about Better Call Saul. Remember in uh, Breaking Bad when they they hired him, they like they they get him out to the desert and they've had a bad cook and they're just about to shoot him in the head. And he's like, wait, 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 put a dollar in my pocket. And they're like, what the fuck? Why? And he's like, you want uh, attorney client privilege, right? Put a dollar in my pocket. And Jesse's like, I only have a five. He's like, that's fine. <laughs> he's about to get shot. <laughs> <laughs> and they, 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 they put a one and a five in his pocket and now they are clients and all of a sudden the relationship flips. And so now he's helping them. So he goes from just some prick to somebody who's actually helping them out. So we're suggesting like it offer static pressure testing for like 25 or 50 bucks, like where it's cheap enough because you're there for free anyway. If it's a free quote, you've managed to dodge that. You've got enough work that you're okay. Not everybody has that luxury in their market. So if you have the luxury, do it. But if you don't, you know, whatever. But it, as soon as you collect some money from them, their mindset shifts and they look at you differently and the, the relationship starts getting better. And so if you just help them understand that, that's good. So there's a 90 second video on that. And then a four minute video on the six functions, what we were talking about earlier. And those two videos together kind of get people educated enough that they're not idiots. And, you know, they can follow along when you tell them about better stuff. Nice. <laughs> cool, cool beans, man. All right. Well, till next time, Gil. Yes. Thank you. But I appreciate you, man. Not to get all sentimental, but, you know, I'm glad that we linked up, became friends and have got to meet each other in person, you know, several times, man, because you really are a smart dude. I know that you don't give yourself enough credit, but I love the way you explain things. You're a smart guy. And every time you come on the show, man, you're always bringing value. So I appreciate you and thank you for coming on, man. Oh, it's my pleasure. And I I feel the same way, Gil. You're just a solid dude. And I appreciate that because there's a lot of people around that aren't. So that can be frustrating. I know what you're <laughs> um, With that, let, let me. <laughs> I forget what we're talking about. Um, yeah. With that, have a good night, everyone. <laughs> yeah. All right, buddy. Let me close this out real fast. Oh, man, 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 man. Guys. Thank everybody for coming to watch the show tonight. I really appreciate you guys. There was a whole bunch of new people. I saw Jennifer Manzo, obviously, uh, and her husband, Al, 
I appreciate you guys being in here. Mr. C. Young was in here, East Coast. We had all kinds of people. Mr. HVAC Blogger, East Coast. Rookie, obviously. Rookie is my man. He is always here. Mr. Jared, who was doing comments earlier. Hughes Man was here for a little bit. My HVAC life. If I miss anybody, I'm really, really sorry. But I want uh, Mr. Sam Andrews. I'm trying to make sure I get everybody real fast before I close this out. If I missed you, I apologize. But thank you guys for coming live, man. I always love these shows. Uh, Nate, like I said, he brings so much. He's a really, really smart dude. And he understands the why behind the what. And that when you're explaining something, sometimes I can tell you, hey, look at this. But if I don't tell you the why behind the what, it's kind of hard for you to make sense of it. And that's what I love when Nate comes on. We always have that. And what he says kind of just makes sense to all the things that I always say about you guys being really, really good technicians and then being able to communicate that to customer offering options and solutions and that's how you make more money in this industry. It's really that simple. And I know some people come on and maybe it seems salesy or, or it doesn't really connect with you. But I hopefully tonight, I brought it full circle and you really understand what I'm trying to say to you. And I want that to be able to benefit each and every one of you, man. Go check out the HVAC 2.0 podcast with Nate and them. They will get into technical things and break it down like you won't hear other places. Also, check out HVAC 2.0. You just saw a bunch of different things, and that's only a smidge of what's all incorporated in that. So go check it out. You can reach out to Nate. He's Nate the House Whisperer on Instagram. I think he's the same on Facebook or Nate. But if you search Nate Adams, you'll find him. If you need him, get in touch with me. I can get you in touch with him. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Obviously, guys, please make sure you follow me on all the social media sites. So TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube right here. And then download the audio podcast. Let's try to get to 4 million, see what happens. And uh, if you could leave me a review on those places, a five-star review. If it's not a five-star review, I'd rather you email me and let me know why it's not a five-star review. That way I can make it better to get it five stars. So you email me at hvacuncensored at gmail.com. Yeah, with that being said, man, guys, be safe out there. We all have somebody to make it home to. Keep your head on the swivel. Do the little things. Set yourself apart from the next guy. There's no reason you cannot be better if you want to be better. There are so many resources out there, podcasts, internet learning, skill sharing websites, audio books, regular books, you name it. There's always ways to make yourself better. All right? So if you want it, then go fucking get it. That's it. Don't let anybody stop you. There's plenty of resources in the day and age of the interweb. All right. I love you guys, man. I appreciate you. And until next week, I'll talk with you mofos later. Thanks for listening to the HVAC Uncensored Podcast. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Instagram or email us anytime at HVACUncensored at gmail.com. Now get back to work. Shut this down. The views and opinions shared on the HVAC Uncensored podcast may not necessarily be the views and opinions of our sponsors or guests. And don't forget, my fucking birthday is tomorrow. So if you guys want to send me some shit, uh, just reach out. I'll take your money and shirts. I wear extra large. Okay? Thank you. Bye.